Hi, hey Russ here. Welcome back to my shop. Um, today we want to talk about zeroing out your axis. <coughs> On one of my earlier videos I did what I call controlling the Z axis and on that I touched on the idea of how you had a ruler setting here and I can set that ruler along the magnets anywhere up and down so that when I zero out my router then I can set my ruler to zero and I know where I'm starting and I can see how far I'm going down into the material by watching my ruler. Well on your y-axis they have a static ruler here that runs from one end to the other on the 1200. I, I assume the 900 and the 1500, all those have similar type of situation. But and this thing is actually almost worthless. I used to use it. And quite honestly, it's so hard. If you wanted to do something, uh, for example, you're going to make a whole bunch of legs like this. This is the waist end on both ends of it. So you're going to cut it off here. And then you got a flat spot here, here, and here. And then you have your twists going not to directions here. A classic example of a table leg or something that you might make on the legacy when you're turning on center. So the thing that you want to do is you want to be able to set this on the headstock end. You want to be able to put this in the thing. And then you want your point of zero on your measuring to be right here. And you know you're going to come over an inch, two inches, whatever you're going to come, and you're going to start milling here. This, you want to make it perfectly flat here, here, and here on four sides. Then you want to transition and do your spiral here and here, leaving the center flat also. Well, trying to do all that math on here, because first off, that line right there, that ain't going to be zero on this. So then you go, oh, that's at two and a quarter inches. Now I gotta come over six and an eighth inches, then come over another three inches, and then come over six and an eighth inches to get this thing set up the way you want. <coughs> Try to do all that math on here. I did it. I admit it's a pain and mistakes can be made. So there is a much easier way. If you can zero out your axis, um, and let's just say something simple. Uh, I have here I have here a board that I've put into my work right here. And I'm, let's say I'm going to do some work on this, mill it every so often. Well, if I look at my scale and I bring this over, I have to do math to figure out where I'm going to be doing different things based on where the starting edge is and how much, how often I want to increment. Well, there's an easier way. What I found is, I just took, this is an example of how to do it. I just take a regular ruler, I put a 3 8 inch thick piece of MDF on it, and it fits into this slot. So now, I can set that into my slot, like so. I know that this edge of my board, I want it to be zero. And I'm going to measure that way. So I take my ruler over here. Now I did do the measuring to see where I was at on this scale. I know that this edge is at 32 and a half inch, 33 and a half inches. So I just bring my ruler down to 33 and a half inches, the zero end. Take a piece of tape. And put it on here. And now... I can bring it over and I'm zeroed out looking at that scale and I can go along here using that scale on this ruler here instead of this scale here and that works really well so that whether you're and you can turn the ruler around I have a ruler here that is uh, double sided 24 inch and if you turn it up one way it goes from left to right on the measuring you turn it over and it goes from right to left so I could do this in there, set it where zero would be from either direction, and I can read my marks then as I go along up to 24 inches on that ruler. <coughs> but let's suppose you're doing something really strange. Let's say instead of this board here, three and a half inches wide, I have a seven inch wide board, and I want to keep the very center two inches 
from uh, being milled. But every 13, 13 16 of an inch, I want to do a milling in both directions. All I did is I took a piece of tape, painter's tape, and I marked it out with a scripto, and I take and I put this on here, and it doesn't matter where you put it. You put that on there, then you bring the edge of my tape here, which I would still call zero, and you bring that over to 33 and a half. Now I know that's my zero point. Now, now I can bring it over here, do my milling at this mark, at this mark, at this mark, and then when I get to the center, I don't do anything, then I got my marks over here, and I don't have to do any measuring at all. Incrementing it every 13 16 of an inch, leaving this center the way it is. So a story stick, basically, is what this is. And I'd made that a piece of tape. If I was doing a particular leg that I wanted to design, and I'm ready to start doing milling on it, and now I want to mill a hundred of those legs, I just, I, instead of tape, I would just make a, a regular story stick of my own with all the information on it, and then I can slide it in here and put it where I want it to be zero and move through the, the different marks. I can do it in different colors, so when you make up your story stick, if you're going to do a lot of them, it's well worthwhile to make a story stick to do it. If you're doing four of them and it's a complicated layout, this is a great way to do it. So the idea is, is that you take your your ruler and you set it up so they can go anywhere along here you get it to where you want it lock it down and now your point zero is here instead of at over here where you have to do math to see what you want for zero great little setup it works real well on this axis you can do the same thing over here uh, where this is going to end up I don't know this works for me right now I think that eventually I would like to have what is called a center ruler instead and that is where you can go either direction from point zero. At this point, I think I'm probably going to make one of my own that fits in here and has a little set screw to lock it down so I can slide it where I want it, lock it down, and be done. When I get that, I'll let you know. But the principle here is what we're talking about. Now, on your Z or Y axis, you have the same thing, but it's a different scale. And you could do the same thing, but you wouldn't be able to use this ruler in here because that's a total different setup and different measurements you have to find what you're going to use there and it will be different than your y and then your, your x-axis so but it can be done once i get that one set up i'll let you know this is how you set the zero though it makes it much easier and a lot less math when you're milling something up whether you're milling center to center or something that is flat you get to mill it up and you don't have any math. Uh, the other thing I want to mention real quick is recently I did a video on setting the height of your work surface and how you use spacers in there, one on each end. And the thing about having those spacers there is that it makes it flat from side to side perfectly every time because my board is perfectly flat. And so I don't even have to think about that. When I put my board in, that helps me adjust the height on both ends. Well, originally I told you, and I was tightening up all six of my handles on this. After I got to thinking about it, I realized, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I realized that actually you don't have to tighten the four corner ones. Gravity will hold them in place. All you really have to do is lock down the two center ones on my machine because it's a 1200 and that's so that it won't sag which is why those are there to begin with so once I set the end I lock these two down I'm ready to go so actually it's a lot less work to tighten and loosen this and readjust the height than it was before when I showed you um, if you have a 900 machine you don't have to lock any of them down you can just lift it up and down leave them loose gravity will hold that in place all your pressure is is, is down on your work so it's not going to lift up so you're good to go without ever having to tighten it down before they were used because you had to tighten it side to side because of the way the system worked and it would always kind of tilt on you because it had that single screw in the middle and you had to do that but now with the full flat spacer 
it's naturally going to be flat across there, so you don't have to tighten them down for any reason. Give it a try. I've been doing it for a while that way now since I thought about that, and it actually works. So anyway, uh, those are the two tips that I kind of had today. I appreciate you stopping by. If you have any comments or any suggestions, please leave them below. We all would like to hear about it. And also, I want to thank you for stopping by to begin with. And more importantly, please come back again soon, okay? We'll see you.